Hi guys, in this video today we're going to talk about the six trig ratios. So this is kind of fun because everyone knows about sine cosine tangent, but there are actually three others in addition to sine cosine tangent. Now the good thing or the easy thing about it is they really are just reciprocals of the other three. So for instance, um, cotangent is the reciprocal, reciprocal of tangent and secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if you keep them all in order, then it's pretty easy to remember which ones go together and you just have to flip the other one around to get it. So let's just start remembering with sine, cosine, tangent. Everyone knows those. We're asking for the sine of A, so we're looking at this angle up here. This is our theta. We also need to know the hypotenuse, and I mentioned the other day um, the Pythagorean triples. This also is a Pythagorean triple, that we could do it the long way, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared, but if you have Pythagorean triples memorized, it works also. And the answer for the hypotenuse is 13, because I do the Pythagorean theorem, or I just have it memorized that 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. Okay, if we're looking for the sine of angle A, then we are going to do opposite over hypotenuse, that is 5 over 13. And that means that the cosecant is the reciprocal, it's 13 over 5. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 12 over 13. And so secant is the reciprocal, and so it's 13 over 12. And tangent, opposite over adjacent, that's 5 over 12, and so the reciprocal will be 12 over 5. And if you wanted to fill in these boxes, you could also write in words how to come up with the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. Okay, the other day we were talking about the unit circle and the coordinates on the unit circle. And so, for instance, if we come over here and look at this angle, if I'm talking about sine, cosine, tangent, is that going to be a positive answer or a negative answer? And so this is going to tell us when that answer will be negative and when that answer will be positive. One thing is the hypotenuse is always positive. So if I'm looking at this angle, for instance, I can tell that my x, my adjacent, is going to be a negative value. This one, though, goes up in the positive direction, so that is a positive value. And then, like I said, the hypotenuse is always positive. Well, we can go through this for every single quadrant, but there's an easy way to remember it. And so there's a mnemonic, and it says all students take classes. And what that means is in the first quadrant, everything is positive. All is positive. In the second quadrant, the sign is positive. So that's all students. So this S stands for students, all students. So here the sign is positive. And of course, because it's the reciprocal, the cosecant is also positive. In the third quadrant, the tangent is positive and the reciprocal, the cotangent. Everything else in that quadrant is going to be negative. And then this quadrant tells us that the cosine is positive, and of course the reciprocal is the secant. So in this quadrant, the cosine and the secant will be positive, everything else will be negative. So that's just a little mnemonic to help you remember when is it positive, when is it negative. Let's turn the page. Okay, because the reason I brought that up is we are not always going to be on the unit circle. Um, in these problems, that's no longer a unit circle. Remember the unit circle had a radius of 1, and so, you know, this might be our unit or circle right here, but here we have a point, negative 4, 2, outside of that unit circle. It's bigger than the unit circle. And so if I go to my graph and I plot the point, negative 4, 2, here's my point, negative 4, 2. Um, I want to find the exact value of the trig functions for theta. Well, what is theta? Um, so we need to think about what is theta. First of all, we're going to draw a ray back to the origin, and that's showing that that is our angle. And whenever we do these kind of problems, we are always going back to the reference angle. The reference angle means you go back to the x-axis, and so your theta is here at the origin, and it's, it's going across, you know, here's going to be, this is going to be my 2, this is going to be my negative 4. I need a hypotenuse here. So I do have to do some math to find the hypotenuse, but I want to get back to just the point that we have to use that reference angle. We always create the angle from the x-axis. That reference angle is the angle we're talking about. Okay, so if I do the Pythagorean theorem, I need to find my hypotenuse. 
and my hypotenuse is from the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem. I get the square root of 20, which goes down to 2 radical 5, is my hypotenuse. I'm going to go ahead and write that in here. Okay, so I'm going to write down my six trig functions because it's asking for all six of them. So sine, cosine, tangent, we always just know that that's the order of those. Then for the other ones, you again, if you go in the correct order, you'll keep them in reciprocal order. So the next one after tangent is cotangent, and then we have secant and cosecant. If we keep them in that order, then we will know which ones are reciprocals of each other because they're in the right order. Okay, so sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be 2 over 2 radical 5, which reduces. The 2's cancel each other out, and you get 1 over radical 5. But, of course, you're not supposed to have a radical 5 in the denominator, and so we're going to have to multiply that by radical 5, and we get that the sine of theta is radical 5 over 5. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be negative 4 over 2 radical 5. And so once again, we multiply by radical 5 to get rid of that radical 5. It does reduce. And then we multiply by radical 5. We get negative 2 radical 5 over 5. We will do tangent. And tangent does not have a radical in it, so that makes it a little bit easier. And so we get negative 1 half. Okay, the other three now, um, the cotangent is going to be easy. We're going to do the reciprocal of that. So that's just going to be a negative 2. I don't really need to show any work because I did all my work here. The cosine, um, excuse me, the secant, which is the inverse or the reciprocal of the cosine, I'm not actually going to use my last answer. I'm actually going to go back a couple of steps and use the first answer. And the reason is, if I don't, then I'm going to have to do that whole radical reciprocal on the denominator thing again. And that's kind of um, an extra step that I don't need to do. So I'm going to go back to the original and say that this is my secant. It's 2 radical 5 over negative 4. And now that will just reduce to radical 5 over negative 2. Or you could put the negative out front and just call it radical 5 over negative 2. All right, cosecant, once again, rather than starting with the end, I'm going to go back to the very beginning and use this one instead so I don't have to get rid of my radical again. Um, so it's going to be 2 radical 5 over 2, which is just radical 5. Okay, that's how you find the six trig ratios for a given angle. You go to the reference angle, and then you just list them out, and you come up with all six. The last three are just reciprocals of the first three. Number two, I actually think I'm going to change number two, because as it is, it turns out to be too similar to the previous one. And so I just want to make it um, one that isn't quite as similar. Let's say that this is um, negative two, negative five instead. And the reason, again, was just that otherwise the answers come out really similar to the one up above it. So I want to try something different. Um, so we have a point here, negative 2, negative 5. And so we plot our point negative 2, negative 5. We draw our ray from the origin. To find our angle, we go back to the reference angle. That means we go back to the x-axis and find that reference angle there. And now we've got it set up. The last thing that we need to do before we go to the sine cosine tangent is we need to do the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so we get the square root of 29. Um, cannot be simplified, so we're just going to have to leave it like that. Okay, so sine opposite over hypotenuse. Why don't you take a second right now? You come up with these first three. Make sure you rationalize your denominator. All right, for your sine cosine tangent, sine opposite over hypotenuse. Make sure you rationalize your denominator, negative 5 radical 29 over 29. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Rationalize the denominator, 2 radical 29 over 29. Excuse me, that's a negative. And tangent is 5 over 2. Let's go back for just a second to all students take classes. And these all students take classes, is what I was talking about on the other side, tells us when they are positive. In this quadrant, this third quadrant, the t, that's the tangent, is positive, everything else is negative. If we look at our work, look, negative, negative, positive. We're correct, we're, we're good on our signs. We've, we've stuck with what we need to do. Okay, let's move on to cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Take a second to do the reciprocals of those and make sure you get those right answers, get the signs correct, and get your radicals correct. 
Okay, so cotangent, just the reciprocal, 2 over 5. Secant, negative, radical 29 over 2, does not reduce. That negative can be on the top, it can be on the bottom, it can be out front, doesn't matter. I've just put mine out front. Cosine, or excuse me, cosecant, which is the reciprocal of the sine. Radical 29 over 5, my negative out front. So that's finding your six trig ratios, um, which are, again, the last three are new to us. The all students take calculus helps you remember what signs are which, when it's supposed to be positive, when it's supposed to be negative. In fact, just real quick, let's go up to number one and double check that there as well. All right, all students take classes. So here we are in the second quadrant, that would be sine. That says that the sine should be positive, everything else should be negative. Sine is positive, negative, negative. We did it correct. And then these other ones, their signs follow, right? So they're not listed in there, but obviously if this is negative, this is negative, this is negative, this is negative, and this is positive, then the cosecant is also positive. So we did get our signs correct. Um, I have some lines here for summary. The reason I have them here is that um, I had space to put them there, and so you can summarize some things from this page, from the previous page, and um, that is how we find these six trig functions.